Mohamed Kudus has become one of the brightest young talents in football and also the next face of Ghana's national team. However, Kudus initially had many obstacles that tried to prevent him from reaching international stardom, like growing up in extreme poverty and overcoming many serious injuries early on in his career. So, how exactly did Kudus overcome these difficulties to become an exciting footballing talent for many years to come? Well, let's take a look at the rise, fall, and rise again of Mohamed Kudus. Real quick before we get on with the video though guys, remember to follow my Twitter and Instagram, both at Nabuto, especially Twitter since I'm trying to get to 1,000 followers and I love tweeting about football. So if you have a Twitter account, feel free to hit me up with that follow. Thank you. Now Kudus was born on August 2nd, 2000 in the capital of Ghana, Accra, but more specifically in the slum community of Nima. Now growing up in Nima isn't easy. This area is typically associated with gang violence and drug abuse and up until very recently, it was notoriously known for being a bad area with bad people. But Kudus directly goes against these negative stereotypes because all throughout his childhood, he stayed away from these sort of things and instead fell in love with football. All all young Kudus did in his childhood was play football on the dirt pitches and study well for his classes. Now from a young age, the people of Nima knew how talented Kudus had become with the ball at his feet. And when Kudus turned 11 years old, he was allowed to play for his boyhood club, Strong Tower FC, in a football tournament held by a nonprofit called Books and Boots, an organization that specifically targets impoverished communities suffering with crime, drugs, etc., and try to use football to encourage children to stay away from that dark path. And it worked, because at this tournament when Kudus was playing, he scored 6 goals in one game in the 6 6 draw against Powerlines FC. Kudus' performance was so good that it impressed everybody watching, including the founder of the Right to Dream Academy in Ghana, Tom Vernon. From then on, Tom Vernon saw the potential of Mohamed Kudus and allowed him to play with his academy all the way until 2018. Then, when Tom Vernon became the chairman of FC Norgeland in Denmark, he brought three Ghanaian players with him, and this obviously included Mohamed Kudus, but also his teammates Ibrahim Sadiq and Gideon Mensa. This guy Tom Vernon believed in Kudus so much that he brought him all the way to Europe to continue fighting for his dreams. What a guy, man. Now over in Denmark, Mohamed Kudus was involved with FC Norgeland right away and got his debut three days after his 18th birthday in the 2 0 defeat versus Bromby. And this made him the ninth youngest player to make his debut in the history of Norgeland. In Kudus' first season of professional European football, he would get a total of four goals and two assists in 35 games. Not the most crazy stats, but remember, he's still only 18 years old and this is literally his first time outside the country Ghana. So if you include the context, these stats are pretty decent. Plus, in the 1920 season, Mohamed Kudus easily became the best young player in the Danish league. In that 1920 campaign, Kudus got 12 goals and 1 assist in 28 games and started to establish himself as a real attacking threat on the pitch, often playing as an attacking midfielder or a right winger, and oftentimes he showcases outstanding dribbling ability and also just runs into the box to get on the end of the ball. When Norgeland, his quick change of pace without him losing the ball often shook the defenders around him, making him unstoppable in the Danish league. With these great consistent performances from Kudus for Norgeland, he got snapped up by Dutch Giants Ajax in the summer of 2020 for 9 million euros on a 5 year contract. At the start of Kudus' Ajax career, he was balling out, with them having one goal and three assists in his first three games that he played for the club. Kudus was doing so well that even the manager at the time, Eric Ten Hag, said that he was a player with incredible potential. Ten Hag provided Kudus with his Champions League debut in the home match against Liverpool in late October. However, this match went the exact opposite as expected, because Kudus had to be subbed out only after six minutes due to him suffering from a serious meniscus injury. Kudus even spoke about this incident, saying that he wanted to continue the game because playing against Liverpool is an opportunity of a lifetime, but he knew that his body would not be able to handle it. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. This serious meniscus injury would hit Kudus hard and keep him out for several months, all the way up until January 2021. He reappeared on the pitch for Ajax against PSV Eindhoven, but Kudus would suffer a setback in his recovery and miss five games, and would only return to action for Ajax in the middle of February, where he would stay fit for the rest of the season, contributing to Ajax winning the domestic double. Overall in the campaign though, Kudus would manage to get four goals and three assists in 22 games, but in those games, he would only manage to get a total of around 880 minutes, which is a huge decrease from the 2,000 plus minutes he played for Norgeland at his last season with the Danish club. Clearly, injuries were playing a big role in stalling the career of Mohamed Kudus, and the 2021 campaign wasn't going to be the only season with these issues. That's because the next season, the 21-22 campaign, was also an injury-stricken season for Kudus. Before the campaign even started, Ajax announced that Kudus suffered an ankle injury during preseason and was forced to train separately from the team. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy and this ankle injury lasted all the way up until October. But then in November 2021, Kudus suffered a serious rib fracture injury during the international break with Ghana, and this kept him out for another three months. Oh no, no. This, this, this can't be. Why, Lord? Why, Lord, why? 
Then in 2022, even after Kudus regained fitness, he played a decent amount for the second team of Ajax, Jean Ajax, just due to the fact that his playtime was getting restricted because of how injury prone he was becoming. But then in April, Kudus would finally become a consistent player for Ajax in the Eredivisie and played a role in helping them winning the 21-22 Eredivisie title. Overall, in this injury-influenced campaign, Mohamed Kudus got 6 goals and 1 assist in 25 games. Not that bad to be fair, considering how many times this dude Kudus was getting injured. At this time though, there were a few question marks regarding Mohamed Kudus and whether or not he would ever live up to his world class potential considering his injury issues. But the Ajax hierarchy and their fans still believed in him and Kudus would pay them back in the 22-23 campaign, balling out for the Dutch Giants. In fact, in this campaign, Mohamed Kudus would manage to get a total of 18 goals and 6 assists in 42 games as a winger slash false 9. Plus in this campaign, he managed to stay injury free and played a part in every single Champions League game for Ajax and even scoring that beauty against Liverpool, where his old home Nima watched him score that beauty and celebrated it like crazy. And when I was watching that game, since I'm a Liverpool fan, Man, duh. I was like, hold up, bruh. This dude Kudus is kinda sick. I want that man on my team. Back to Kudus in the Champions League, though. Although Ajax only stayed for the group stages, Kudus managed to rack up four goals and two assists in those six games, showcasing his amazing footballing ability to all of Europe. And also, these great performances would get him called up for Ghana at the 2022 World Cup, where once again Kudus would show his class, scoring two goals against South Korea to get Ghana their first World Cup victory in like 12 years. After my run, man, how is that even a question? I'm here. Overall, this 22 23 season, though, many football fans started to see Kudus for the super talent that he is and knew that this dude was the real deal. During his time at Ajax, specifically the last season, Kudus continued to display his extraordinary dribbling ability and his desire to come back to the midfield and drive the ball forward, using his strength to push defenders aside. Additionally, even as an attacking midfielder slash right winger slash false nine, he literally played everywhere, he surprisingly had a great defensive work rate and was often seen running back to his defense to help his teammates out. And you know coaches love that shit. Plus, with 24 goal contributions total for Kudus, he had more goal involvements than the likes of Marinelli, Phil Foden, and only one behind the acclaimed world-class winger Bukayo Saka in that campaign. Yes, I know, those guys are playing in the Premier League, but still, this shows that Kudus was putting up impressive numbers. That's when in the summer of 2023, many clubs started to show interest in signing Kudus, and this included many top clubs as well. However, Kudus played it smart and wanted to play for a club in one of the top five leagues that would guarantee him a significant amount of playtime, and he found a perfect club, which was West Ham United, who signed the the Ghanaian star for 44.5 million euros, with Kudus becoming the third Ghanaian player ever to play for West Ham and also the second most expensive Ghanaian footballer of all time, only behind Thomas Party. Now, after joining the proclaimed best and hardest league in the world, the Premier League, Kudus is making it seem like his playground, with him balling out for West Ham United, getting 6 goals and 1 assist in 16 games alone in the Prem, and overall, he's gotten himself 13 goals and 2 assists in 27 games. During his time with West Ham so far, Kudus would have some memorable moments, like scoring twice in the comeback against TSC Bakatopola in the Europa League, I have no idea whether I pronounced that correctly or not, scoring a late equalizer against Newcastle in the 89th minute, and even scoring West Ham's goal of the month for November against Brentford. Kudus is continuing to showcases world class ability in England and is playing a huge role in why West Ham currently sit 6th place in the Prem and are currently fighting for a spot in Europe's competitions once again. Overall, at the young age of 23 years old, Mohamed Kudus is on the rise to become one of football's next world class players in this upcoming generation. With this seeming like he put his injury issues to the past, Kudus seems like a man on a mission to make a name for himself and also lead Ghana to glory once again, like they did in the 2010 World Cup where they made the quarterfinals of the tournament. And I'm sure something similar could happen in the future because Kudus seems like the real deal and also the man that could lead Ghana to achieving great things. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And also let me know in the comments down below what player I should do next. Also, follow my Twitter and Instagram, the links are in my YouTube description. And last but not least, if you want to learn more about what happened to the last 14 Golden Boy Award winners, something Muhammad Kudus was actually nominated for, you should definitely check out this video right here, you won't regret it.